Three murders on New Providence in the past 24 hours. We ask relatives, um, please search, see if there's anybody missing who haven't showed up for, um, to their residence last night. The consultant to the Ministry of Finance talks about the economy. Desmond Bannister joins the race for FNM deputy leader. Free registration for government online services, plus the new Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture settling in as the former minister reflects on his tenure. The results speak for itself. I'm Nikia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. Spending your Saturday evening with us. The murder count climbed by three over the past 24 hours to 58, the most recent occurring this morning. Police were called to the scene after the body of a man was discovered partially submerged in a pond at the rear of the National Insurance Building on Blue Hill Road. According to Superintendent Philip Don Wilson, the gruesome discovery was made by a passerby around 7.15 this morning. The police received a report of a dark male um, partially clothed, who was submerged in the waters here at the rear of the National Insurance Complex. We were able to retrieve from the water a black male, approximately 5 feet 8 inches, uh, slim bill, weigh approximately 160 pounds, and the age factor is between 26 to 30 years of age. He was partially clothed with a boxers and a top on. Superintendent Wilson said the victim had injuries to the upper body. At the scene this morning, police were collecting evidence, including a bicycle that was found several feet away from the victim's lifeless body. Crime scene investigators were also seen examining a nearby pile of sand at the pond's edge. Police are asking anyone who may not have seen a family member since last night to contact them. And two other men died in hospital today around 10 a.m. this morning. A victim who was shot around 8 Friday night succumbed to his injuries. That victim was killed at Meadow Lane off East Street after he was approached by four men. A third man died just 20 minutes later in hospital following a stabbing in the parking lot of the Independence Shopping Center. While only one person died, three men were stabbed during that incident that took place around 3 this morning. And as with this morning's murder, police are asking for help solving all these murders. We are now making an appeal to the general public for anyone who might have a missing relative or who might have been in this area during the wee hours of the morning or late yesterday to give us a call at, uh, at any police station or our crime tippers number or the police emergency number at 919. Well, the economy is another issue of national importance, and as we revealed earlier, James Smith has been appointed consultant to Minister of Finance and Prime Minister Perry Christie. We recently spoke to Smith about his role and the way forward for the country's economy. Smith brings with him years of experience in the local financial services sector. He's the former governor of the Central Bank and served in several positions in the Ministry of Finance, including Secretary for Revenue, Permanent Secretary and State Minister. Smith is currently in the private sector working as chairman of CFAL Limited. He said the Ministry of Finance has its work cut out for it with the high unemployment rate and debt-to-GDP ratio. And according to Smith, it will be a slow ride back to a robust economy. The Bahamas has um, quite a bit of work, I think, uh, going forward. Uh, we have slipped um, um, pretty badly in certain areas, and we have to sort of stop the backward slide and uh, regroup and try to um, get some positive economic growth, reduce the level of unemployment, um, get a handle on the um, debt, and you know, reduce the annual uh, deficits. But according to Smith, the revival of the country's economy will also depend on other ministries. Anything fiscal, and uh, we do this also, I think, um, by trying to persuade the other areas, which critical areas, but uh, also expensive areas, to moderate the um, um, 
expectations. However, designing a budget and putting its stamp on it will be very difficult for the Christie administration to do in a month, Smith said. A new budget must be brought to Parliament before the end of this month and passed before the fiscal year ends on June 30th. Smith says the public should not expect any major alterations to the budget, rather small changes in taxation or reallocating resources from one area to the other. I don't think you will see detail and any sort of massive change in direction. That would have to come, I think, after the government has been in for a while. They need to discover exactly the status of the um, country and its fiscal uh, position. And then that would be the framework within which they would have to work. The Free National Movement Deputy Leadership Post is now a three-way race with former Education Minister Desmond Bannister confirming yesterday that he hopes to fill the number two spot. We've already reported that Long Island Member of Parliament-elect Loretta Butler-Turner and defeated FNM candidate Cassius Stewart are seeking that post. Bannister told our news team yesterday that there are many outstanding members of the party and he believes he has something to contribute in mentoring many of them. Bannister added that because of the conditions the country is facing, people need a voice of hope and a voice that is going to make a difference. Bannister was recently appointed to the Senate. As former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram's last few weeks in public life come to a close, there are many who are already judging his legacy. The Prime Minister hasn't given many interviews since his party lost the government on May 7th, but our Jasmine Bonamy recently caught up with him and got him to share how he felt after the loss and elaborate on what he plans to do now. When it comes to the 2012 general election, there's just about one thing that former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram is sorry about. He's sorry that the Free National Movement is not the governing party. But Ingram says he's not sorry that he'll be retiring from frontline politics. In fact, Ingram told our news team that he is relieved that he no longer has to deal with the great burden that came with political life. In the days since announcing his retirement, Ingram has said he plans to return to his law office in Nassau and reopen his office in Abaco. But most of all, Ingram says he plans to spend quality time with his family. Speaking candidly, Ingram said his departure from politics is long overdue. I'm really relieved um, of a great burden and responsibility. Um, I'm sorry the party is not in government, but I'm not, I'm not sorry I'm not in government. Um, I don't regret anything I did. I don't regret losing. Um, I don't feel badly about it. Um, I have relief. Uh, I can now have my life back. Following the May 7th elections, the FNM won only 9 of 38 seats in the House of Assembly. After meeting with his constituents in North Abaco on Saturday, the former Prime Minister revealed he would resign his seat on July 19th, the anniversary of his first election in 1977. I've served him for 35 years. I ran um, to become Prime Minister. Um, I had to become an MP in order to become Prime Minister. I have no desire to serve as an MP anymore. Um, I had made a decision back in 2002 and uh, I ran because the party needed me to ensure that we won Abaco. Um, and I came back in 2005 uh, because the party now just called for me. But I've been ready to go a long time. As for the FNM's crushing defeat at the polls, Ingram says he has no regrets concerning his time in office. I gave all I could, did the best I could for the public of the Bahamas, served them well, served them honorably. and. Uh, I still owe the public of the Bahamas, and so whatever experience I have, knowledge I've got, is available to my party. Now that Ingram has made it clear he has no plans to lead the FNM, the party is currently restructuring. Killarney MP-elect Dr. Hubert Minnis was sworn in as opposition leader last week. And a one-day convention has been planned for next weekend. And although he has retired from frontline politics, Ingram insists he will still support and be an active member of the party. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy.